Hi, I'm Steph. And I'm Michelle with Sunnyside Design. And we are here in my parents' backyard today and we have a really easy and inexpensive DIY project for you. Certainly one of the main reasons we purchased our home was the wooded and secluded lot. Steve and I immediately knew this was the backyard we were looking for. We love to hike and enjoy nature and that's exactly what this property offered. However, it did come with its challenges in particular with the entire backyard on a slope and many areas very steep, we needed to come up with an affordable idea to create a series of stairs. At first I thought a flagstone or limestone stairs would be amazing until I priced them out. Yikes, they would never fit into my budget. Then the idea came to me, why not make steps like I see on hiking trails? where there is a rock or a log retaining soil behind it. And as it happens, we even had a large amount of leftover stack stone from a little retaining wall we had built. So the cost of this project would be minimal. Let's go over the supplies and the tools that we use to install our outdoor stone steps. So the tools that we used were just your basic gardening tools. We used a shovel, a rake, a pick mattock and a level. And then the other supplies we used were flagstone chips and stacked stone. Now the stacked stone was left over from our small retaining wall that we had built for our garden area. And we had actually found this stacked stone through the online classifies. As luck would have it, someone was taking out a retaining wall and we were able to get three trailer loads full for only $100. So that was a bargain in itself. After building our wall, we moved the remaining pieces to the backyard, just waiting for another project. Now the flagstone chips are a great choice for pathways or steps because of their natural binding ability and compaction. We had already used these um, flagstone chips for a pathway in our backyard and then we had used them around our raised uh, flower beds in our or our raised vegetable garden beds. Um, to find flagstone chips in your area I would suggest just doing a Google search. You'll find that they are located at local nurseries and landscaping companies. We uh, purchased ours in bulk for our initial project um, that we had done where we were also putting in a fire pit area. Um, you can also buy it by the bag for smaller areas. So we have pur purchased it both ways. All right, let's get on with the project. The first thing we did is decide on the placement of the first stone for our steps. Then we used a shovel or a pick to loosen the soil and remove enough dirt so that the front end of your stone is about two inches below the dirt line. This will ensure that your stone will stay in position as you walk on it. As you clear away the soil for your stones, you may run into some roots from trees. You can use either the pick mattox or a hatchet. We actually, on some of our um, stairs, ran into some larger roots and we actually got out the chainsaw to remove those. So you'll have to just kind of, um, if you run into tree roots, um, improvise and get, do what you can to remove those um, obstacles in your way. Once you think you've cleared out enough dirt for your first stone, you'll want to place it into position and see if you need to make any adjustments to fit it into the location where you need it to fit. As each stone step is placed into position, you'll want to make sure that they are level. Not only did we make sure that our stones were level side by side, by side 
but you'll also want to make sure that the stone isn't tipping forward or backwards. You'll want it to be nice and level so that it feels safe to walk on. Now the stones are not exactly smooth um, on the sides at the top or the bottom and so you'll have to kind of adjust the dirt if you're using stacked stone to help it to fill in in those gaps and to make it level and so here Steve is just taking the, the soil and um, sprinkling it in where he needs a little bit more and then kind of compacting it down when he puts that stone on it and then he'll check it again for level. It usually takes two or three times pulling that stone in and out to get it exactly um, in the position we would like it to be in for the stone. So you'll have to just kind of adjust that back and forth as you place each stone. Once that stone is in position where we want it to be, then we're going to push the soil back up um, in front of the stone so it's got a couple of inches of dirt along the front edge of the stone. This will help it um, to not move out of position. And then he's going to kind of fill in the gaps there um, behind the stone. Um, so that that will all be filled in. And then when we get all the stairs into position for this location, we'll take some water, the hose, and sprinkle the soil, which will help compact it um, as well. And that will make it stable. So now we'll move on to the second stone and you'll see how we'll, we will create a little landing pad for each step. We're now going to bring in the second stone for our second step, kind of placed it um, in a general idea where we'd like it to be, and then Steve's going to take that shovel again and kind of mark where he wants to cut back the soil. So he's just going to step around the stone, mark it, and then he can push it out of the way to actually um, remove the soil in this area. Now as we remove the soil for that second step, we're going to remove it level with the top of that first stone that we placed. So we'll just remove all of that dirt to the cut edge where the stone will be placed and then keep the soil flat and level with the top of the first stone. As you see Steve dig out this area, you can see how dry our soil is. We have been experiencing several dry years and this is one of the worst droughts that I have seen in our area. We really could use some moisture, but for now we just have very dry parched soil back here. At this time, it's time to fit that stone again and see what additional dirt needs to be removed. Now you'll see on this particular stone, you see you've got that point going down. He's going to have to um, allow for that and dig a little bit deeper in the center there so that that stone will be level on the top surface for standing on. Once again, we'll use the level again to see which direction we need to adjust the rock to make it level. We need to dig down a little bit more on one side 
and place a little bit more dirt on the other side to make sure that we've got a nice level step here. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Once it is level and we're happy with the placement of that stone and um, dirt or soil is pushed up against the front of the stone, again, we want it to be at least one or two inches of soil in the front of the stone and then again, filling in behind the stone with soil. Now that that second stone is into position, we are just going to repeat the process, continuing our stairs up to, this is a little play area for the grandkids. This is where the teeter-totter is. And so we'll just continue this process, adding in our stairs to get it to the height of the teeter-totter. If you're enjoying this tutorial on how to install some stone steps in your landscaping, please give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to our channel if you would like more DIY ideas on a budget. And if you know that of someone who could enjoy or use this video, please share our video. That helps grow our channel and we would really appreciate that. Thank you. Once each of these stone steps are into position, then we come back in and kind of brush off any loose dirt. We actually want that landing pad behind each of the stacked stone area to be about a half an inch lower than the stacked stone. This is going to give us an area to place our flagstone chips. Now it's time to uh, sprinkle the area with some water. This is going to help compact that soil. Now we have very dense clay soil and so it compacts really well for this and so we just need to wet it and the water itself is going to help that soil to compact. And that is going to prepare the area for the flagstone chips. Bringing the camera a little closer here, now you can see um, behind each of those stacked stone pieces that the soil is about a half an inch to an inch below the stacked stone. And now we are ready to place in our flagstone chips. For this section, because it's just a small section, we purchased bagged flag flagstone chips. And I'm just going to use the flat garden shovel to um, scoop the chips and place it on each of the landing pads behind each of the stacked stone pieces. Once all of the flagstone chips have been spread into that landing area, we just took a tamper tool to kind of compact the stone together. You could just use anything that is flat to kind of work at pushing those stones down into the soil. Um, another um, helpful tip for this is also sprinkling it with water. These flagstone chips also have um, the dust from crushing the stone in the bag as well. And as that is uh, wet with water, it kind of helps in the compaction of the stone itself. After we place those flagstone chips into position, we realized that we probably needed to create a little bit of a retaining wall along the left side of the stones there. And so we had some thin pieces of the stack stone that we kind of dug down on the edge there and inserted those to help retain that soil. 
so that we don't get the dirt washing on to our stones or our flagstone chips. I'd now like to take you on a little walk of some of the stone steps that we have created around our landscaping. This particular step um, goes right up to our fire pit area and then we made a pathway from the other side of the fire pit area and made a few more stone steps going up here and then on up the hill we go up to where the teeter-totter is and the steps that we showed you how to build here that take up the kids up to their play area. And this area right here is another set of steps that we are currently working on. You can see how they are further spaced apart where the slope is not quite as deep and then they are closer together when the slope gets a little steeper. So what do you think? I really love the look of these stairs because it looks natural but it's also neat and it is so much easier to navigate through their yard now. It's not a steep hike. You have stairs to actually lead you to the different areas. And it's not treacherous coming yes. back down. Anyway, so thanks for watching a sunny side design video. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do and give us thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> and um, please follow us on social media. You'll find our links um, below in the description section. And as always here at Sunnyside Design, we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.